Yesterday, in the first half of the day, the euro slid against the US dollar way down by down beats data on factor activity in the eurozone economies. However, in the North American session, the European currency resumed its bullish run, supported by a weaker dollar. Yesterday's statistics on US weekly jobless claims showed that the situation in the labor market remained relatively stable. At the same time, the core personal consumption expenditures price index declined. Personal spending met economists' forecasts, while personal income increased. The Institute for Supply Management said that its manufacturing PMI dropped into contraction territory. As a result, the US dollar came under pressure, thus enabling both the euro and the British pound to gain value. The latter even jumped by about 200 pips. Today's macroeconomic lending includes data on Germany's trade balance and a speech by European Central Bank Vice President Louis de Guindes. However, these events are unlikely to have a severe impact on market sentiment. The focus of traders will be on U.S. non-farm payrolls, which are expected to rise by 200,000 in November after an increase of 261,000 jobs in October. If the indicator is in line with market expectations, the U.S. dollar will most likely extend losses. After all, this report will convince investors that the economy will benefit from the Fed's shift to smaller interest rate hikes and will probably be able to avoid a recession next year. In addition, it is worth paying attention to the U.S. unemployment rate. The indicator is anticipated to remain unchanged at 3.7% in November. Furthermore, traders may take notice of data on average hourly earnings in the United States. Against this background, the most likely scenario for today suggests a continued rise in the value of both the euro and the British pound. From a technical point of view, the trading chart shows that the MACD indicator is in overbought territory. If the price breaks through 1.0536 in early trade, hits a new high rising above today's high and returns below this level, a sell signal will be generated. In this case, the euro will enter a downward correction to 1.0498 and then 1.0452. At the level of 1.0452, I recommend going long on a rebound following the release of US non-farm payrolls data. Long positions at 1.0498 can be opened only amid a false breakout. Alternatively, if the price breaks above 1.0536 and tests it from the top down, the euro will advance sharply after the US unemployment rate is published. Thus, the European currency will have a chance of reaching 1.0568 and even 1.0604. At the level of 1.0604, it will be possible to go short on a rebound with a view to catching an intraday correction of 25-30 pips. Short positions at 1.0568 uh, or 1.0536 will be relevant only amid a false breakout. In case of a downward move and subdued activity at 1.0498, the euro may correct up by 10-15 pips, but then resume its decline. In this situation, traders are recommended to close positions and go long on a rebound at 1.0452 and 1.0395. As for the British pound, it is likely to continue its downward correction. Of course, it would be more profitable for traders to go long at around 1.2179 amid a false breakout or at 1.2112 on a rebound. However, if the price returns to 1.2245 by late trade, 
a false breakout at this level will create a sell signal thus dragging the pound sterling down to 1.2179 in case the price consolidates above this area and tests it from the top down, the volume of long positions will increase. Amid downbeat US jobs data, the British currency may well break through 1.2302 and then head to 1.2347 and 1.2393. At the level of 1.1293, it would be a wise decision to go short on a rebound counting on an intraday downward correction of 35.40 pips. Short positions at 1.2302 and 1.2347 can be considered only in the event of a false breakout. Best of luck and have a nice weekend.